What's up guys? I'm just a gamer and I'm back with another review this time for the last case of Benedict Fox now full disclosure I actually beat this game like Two and a half months ago. I think two months ago and it's just Been gone me a while to get to this review uh, One just because time wise I've just been work and other stuff has just been making me too tired to do anything else uh, Two I wanted to try to get my playthrough the game out before I you know, drop the review which the last part of my playthrough should be up by now and three it was really to get my thoughts in order about this game so yeah without further ado let's get into it now first and foremost the thing that really drew me to this game to begin with was just the aesthetic and the vibe of this game and i have to say i think that's one of the best things about this game just the vibe the environments and just like the creepy aesthetic of everything and like like it was very creepy like even though it's it's not a horror game by any real sense of the word it was still a very creepy game to like go through and explore just because of the ambience and the environments and the sound design as well it was all just very like just very gothic and it felt really really good that being said the story of the game is a bit i don't it's like it's weird because they really don't explain anything like not about benedict not about the situation in the house really you have to like kind of figure all that out which is usually fine when the game does it a good job of letting you find those things out but there's just a lot of stuff that they just don't explain or expand upon um, whether it be uh, mostly with Benedict, your character itself, and the companion that's with him. And it's just like, we get little hints of like, they grew up in some type of situation. How they got together with because of some ritual, like, like we just don't know. Like, like they basically drop these little hints, but they never expand upon it. So like, you never really get to know your character. And I mean, again, there's other games that have done this, but they always give you the opportunity to learn more about your character, the full story behind them, and like what their purpose is, what their situation is. But with this game, they really don't. You just have to infer a lot, even with the little tidbits they give you. And then story-wise with the game, they do, mostly explain everything okay but there are still a few things that they just really don't get into and nothing deal breaking nothing like like too horrible that i didn't understand but still like there's just felt like i there was like missing pieces of information that would have really helped out the story that they just don't give you but overall the story wise it was eh mediocre at best okay at the most i mean sorry <laughs> okay at best mediocre at the worst so but other than but it's not too bad i'll just say for me personally it wasn't too bad and I, I i overall enjoyed it and i thought it was very very uh it was it's a very dark story i'll say that and very melancholy so take of that what you will now besides exploring the game is very, very puzzle heavy. And the puzzles are quite intense. They don't really explain or really go through a tutorial of how to solve these puzzles. They basically just give you items and expect you to figure it out. And they give you a puzzle and you just have to like Think about it long and hard. Hey, do I have an item that I could maybe use to solve this? And I can tell you, there were times where I thought maybe the game was bugged because of I was, how complicated some of these puzzles are. That being said, when I did manage to solve a puzzle, it felt fantastic, almost like beating a Souls boss after hours of bashing my head through it. Because again, there were there was some puzzles that I, I admit took me like an hour just to even figure out what to do and there were some puzzles like I said that I thought were bugged and I eventually had to just look up 
uh, not specifically the answers, but just to see like a hint on, you know, look up on the message boards, a hint of how to solve the puzzle. And yeah, like, cause some of them were really rough and, but solving them on my own, the ones that I did felt fantastic and it really drove the gameplay loop forward a bit more than I thought it would. It was actually really interesting just the fact of like these puzzles that I'm like, did I solve this one yet? No, no, no. I got to go over here. Let me go this other whole direction. Oh, wait, I think this one, this puzzle is a little easier to like this puzzle that I just solved is similar to the one that I couldn't solve back there. Let me go back and see what I'm maybe missing and I'll go back and I'll solve that puzzle. And it felt really good. But that being said, it was really hard or not hard, but just a bit extreme for them not to give you a tutorial or in even a really like a good explanation on how these items are used or how these puzzles are solved. Again, you just had to like go for it. Honestly, I just had to go for it. Now, before I talked about how I thought some of the puzzle or some puzzles thought they might be bugged. And the reason for that is because the game is a bit buggy i ran into a few bugs here and there one major bug that really threw me for a loop was one enemy got trapped or stuck under the floor and it was just i could constantly hear it but i couldn't beat it because it was just under the floor and then at one point the game even crashed on me <laughs> near the end i want to say so yeah the game is a bit buggy here and there and just overall rough around the edges nothing game breaking but there's obviously you could tell some jank um a little bit with the combat it's not like it's really yeah mostly with the combat a little mo most of it especially when it comes to like the two boss fights in the game because that's another thing there aren't really any like bosses like again there's like there's two real bosses in the entire game i think there is one a third one that's like i guess it's like a hidden boss it's like it's part of a separate quest that's that's um optional and i guess there's no i wouldn't even consider them bosses they're just like sections you have to get through so yeah like at most there's only really two bosses in the entire game and they felt a bit janky to get through and it's just it was not a strong suit of the game but again terrible no not at all it was manageable and it's not too bad at all but it again some jank here and there that made it really noticeable and then, like I said, the two bosses felt like there was a missed opportunity. I think if they had a lot more bosses, they could have done a lot more with it. But yeah, besides that, I just think this game is worth a go. It's on Game Pass. And overall, I did enjoy my time with it. So yeah, I guess those are my final thoughts, really. Uh, the game ambience, the mood surrounding it is fantastic. There is a bit of jank, a little few bugs, but hopefully by now that's all been patched out. Hopefully at this point with all the pat, you know, I'm assuming they help fix up the game. And yeah, I mean, overall, I think you will enjoy this game, especially if you enjoy puzzle games. Like, like it's like Metroidvania, but with puzzles. It's a pretty interesting mix and I really enjoyed it and I think you guys will too. So I would suggest you guys check it out. But yeah, those are my thoughts and I hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, please leave a like or comment down below. I'd appreciate any and all feedback. I'm streaming on Twitch, so please consider following me there at twitch.tv slash justagamerink, all together in word, or you can click the link below. But yeah, thanks for watching and until next time, take care and have a good game.